do you and the president talk about it ever? Mm -mm. Just isn't mentioned. Mm -mm. Do you think about it? Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. Every every time he he um, leaves the house, particularly to go on a trip, I think uh, I think my heart stops till he gets back. That was Nancy Reagan in March of 1983, two years after President Reagan was shot in an assassination attempt. Joining us now, NBC News special correspondent Tom Brokaw, best-selling author, historian, and prolific Reagan biographer Craig Shirley, also former special assistant to President Reagan, James Rosebush. He was the top official for philanthropy and public-private partnerships and the longest-serving chief of staff. Mm to First Lady Nancy Reagan. He's also the author of the forthcoming book, True Reagan, What Made Ronald Reagan Great and Why It Matters, due out next month. Gentlemen, good morning to you I all. I think I know the answer to that question. <laughs> Tom, can I start with you? Because you brought such a wonderful uh, photograph, a White House you mm -hmm. covered uh, so closely and a woman you know so well. Well, I, this really has a beginning in 1966 when I was just arrived at NBC. I was 26 years old and I drew a lucky straw. straw. I started covering Ronald Reagan's campaign for governor. Mm. Mm. And I, Nancy was kind of low visibility in those days and they were all concerned about could a Hollywood man become the governor. And then of course I covered the first term and the second term and then the campaign for president. And I got to know them well, but I was always a reporter, always the journalist, and they understood that. When he first took office, I said something that was a little bit intemperate. I said, you know, this whole business about him being a poor boy, right after he got out of college, he had a really good job in Iowa, and he was a high-paid actor in Hollywood. Nancy really didn't like me saying that, so I got a call immediately from Jim Baker and the others and saying, stay away from the White House for a while. And I said, well, I, I'm not going to back off. And they said, no, we understand, but just stay away. The president doesn't care about it. But Nancy is really on a tear about you. About two months later, I got this call, and they said, you're going to be invited to a state dinner. You have to figure out what you're going to say to Nancy in the receiving line. I said, okay. So I go down for the state dinner. Meredith is with me. We're in the receiving line, and Meredith keeps saying, have you figured out what you're going to say yet? And I kept saying, no, I haven't figured it out yet. And I get right up to her, and I said, Nancy, back to square one, just like that. This is the photograph of that oh, moment. Oh, wow. And um, it arrived the next day, this photograph, with the inscription, Dear Tom, back to square one. I love, love it. Nancy. That was so <laughs> typical of her. She, she put it away in a hurry. She didn't want to have a whole ongoing feud with me. And it was kind of the beginning of a different level of a relationship. The president and I shared a birthday, February 6th, and we both would mark it from time to time. And when they first got in office uh, on the first February 6th that they were there, I was on the Today Show. And I said, oh, I know there are big plans at the White House today. They're going to have a surprise party for the president. And they were watching the Today Show up in the living, in the living quarters. And she said to him, Brokaw never gets anything right. I don't know where he got that. <laughs> this whole thing. So we had a lot of little episodes in our lives. And I did talk to her on February 6th this year, as wow. I do almost every year. And, and she sounded quite strong at that point. Um, and, but it's a great loss. But that back to square one story, those lines at those state dinners are enormous. They're right. endless, right. and for the president and the first lady to remember anything that was said oh, I know. is something, I, for sure. <laughs> so, Jim, a lot's been said uh, about the relationship Nancy Reagan had with her husband as a president in terms of advising him and getting him through some of the worst times of his presidency. Can you speak to what role she played inside the West Wing? Well, I think, you know, a lot of is said about Nancy Reagan being the keeper of the legacy. Ronald Reagan himself never thought about his own legacy. In fact, he never mentioned it in his diaries. But I have to say, Tom, I was standing right next to you when that picture was taken. Right. So, uh, yes, they, they never skipped a beat. And, you know, after a lot of those receiving lines, the president would say to me, He'd recount stories that people came through the line and told him. It was remarkable because he loved people that much. Since you were by, by, so close to them, can you, how do you describe, how do you characterize the dynamic between... Well, I think there was a compact between the two of them. I think his weaknesses, she shored up and vice versa. So each way, you know, they had a perfect, it was a perfect Rhythm, balance, yeah. perfect balance between them. John Meacham? Yeah. I wanted to ask Craig Shirley, who's written brilliantly about the mm -hmm. beginning of the Reagan's national political journey and then just recently about uh, the president's uh, long goodbye. Craig, what was Mrs. Reagan's role in the actual mechanics, the tactics 
of 76 and 80 that made so much possible. And then talk about her life as a caregiver. Yeah, sure, John. Uh, in 76, she didn't have much of a role. She was still tentative in national politics, and she was uh, a little bit uh, less sure of herself. She gained some confidence in uh, California and started stepping out more after 1966. But uh, when it came time for national politics, she really uh, just basically uh, was by his side. She didn't get too much involved. By 1980, she was far more self-confident and, in fact, had a hand in the uh, ouster of, uh, of John Sears, Reagan's campaign manager and two other aides because she felt that they weren't doing a good job helping uh, Ronnie get the nomination. So uh, it, it, with each step, as she gained confidence, she took more direct action. And even in the uh, post-presidency, as, uh, as James knows, uh, is that she was there, uh, you, know, she, you know, virtually every day. He was cared for at home. Uh, she was the first person he saw in the morning, the last person he saw at night. Uh, she rarely, rarely ventured out uh, in in those uh, years of the uh, Alzheimer's. And of course, she, she took it all on herself. And James said something very interesting, and I think it needs elaborating, is, is that they were they were almost yin and yang. Is, mm -hmm. is that they, were, they proved the old adage, opposites of tracks, where he was country, she was city. He was denim, she was silk. He was mm -hmm. simple hamburger, and she was uh, fancy meals. Uh, is that in, in many ways, is that they were opposites, mm -hmm. but they were just glued to each other for over 50 years in, an, uh, in a romance that equals and may even exceed the Adams or the Washingtons. They lit each other up. Tom Brokaw, um, is it safe to say one of her last or more uh, long-standing wishes would be to make the Reagan Library what it is today, a place for future presidents to make their first, second, or maybe even third stop? Oh, I do. I do believe that, and I think that her vision has been fulfilled. Absolutely. Uh, it is a, it's such a user-friendly library, mm -hmm. and we use it for debates, obviously. Serious scholars go there, but you go there and you see some of his personal belongings from his horseback riding days, parts of his, parts of his uh, cinematic career. The Oval and, Office, too. Yes, and yes, you see the yes. Oval the Office plane. as well. Yeah. Completely the plane. Created, right? <laughs> as if it's taking off. I know. It's, it's dramatic. Amazing. I once, I once went into that Oval Office. We were doing a seminar out there, and I went in with uh, Michael Dukakis, and the, <laughs> Mrs. Reagan started to explain. He said, no, no, I know all about this. <laughs> this is the first time I've been in it, however. <laughs> you know, I didn't get to get there on my own terms. I, uh, by the way, I also thought in, in the just the right proportion that their cinematic and their thespian training helped them a lot. Uh -huh. Oh, without question. They were very, very aware yes. when they were in yes. public about how they should appear. He should always be presidential. She should always be the first lady. They knew what their audience was. They were never above it, and they connected with it in part because of that training. So, and you know, you know, that was you not know if I might jump in here, that if was jump helping in. to build the power of the American presidency. And that figured largely in Reagan's strategy, for example, to defeat Soviet era communism. So to show the, the strength of the American presidency, Presidency was important, and all those different components, the, his love of the Marine bands and all that sort of thing, that helped to show the picture of a strong American presence. Craig, jump in. Yeah, I, I, in fact, I think it was uh, Tom who may, uh, Tom Brokaw may have done the interview. Toward the end of his presidency, Reagan was asked, it was a network interview, uh, if he'd learned, if anything he, in Hollywood had helped him be president of the United States. And he said, I don't know how you can do this job and not be an actor. <laughs> that was my yeah. interview. <laughs> yeah, that was your interview. And and, and it was a great wisdom because he understood that stagecraft must is, is important for statecraft and that great presidents, you know, whether it was Washington or Lincoln, understood that the power of the stage was everything, FDR was everything in communicating great, uh, great issues and great nostrums. You know, even in her later years, she loved to hear everything about everybody and everything that was going on. Joe and I had the honor of doing an event at the Reagan Library and we had a lunch with her and we were talking about White House transition and let's just say she remembers everything yeah. <laughs> and she yeah. did not hold back at all and had some good opinions to share <laughs> it was really it was incredible and it was so much fun uh, Tom Brokaw Craig Shirley uh, thank you so much James Rosebush thank you as well uh, for sharing your book true Reagan is due out in April April 12th to be exact we'll be right back Hey YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.